Today we're going to make a cottage garden pie. So it's basically like a shepherd's pie or a cottage pie, which is meat and vegetables with potatoes on top, mashed potatoes. In this case, we're going to do it vegan. But chef, I'm not vegan. Why do I want to make something that's vegan? Maybe you are vegan, but if you're not vegan, maybe you have a family member who's vegan. Maybe you're going to have a guest over who's vegan and you want to make something that's going to be delicious and that you're going to enjoy as well. And this has the texture and the flavor of a meat dish. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with vegetable dishes on their own and that they have to taste like meat, but this one really is a convincing dish. It's very hearty. It's very satisfying. We have a few ingredients laid out before us here, uh, and we may use a few other things. This is a general idea, just so you get the gist of what's needed to pull this off. Uh, we have our potatoes for our mashed potatoes, onion, celery, carrots, we have some corn from last summer that we froze and vac sealed. We also have some fire roasted red peppers also from last summer. Our basic spices, salt, pepper. And then we have aromatic spices. I have cloves, cinnamon, allspice, and nutmeg. Our meat substitute in this case is going to be lentils. These are Dupuy lentils, uh, but other lentils will do. Any kind of lentil. Uh, beluga lentils are good. Dupuy lentils but you can use the red lentils or you can use peas like split pea peas. And then we have some chickpeas, which I've already started to soak because we'll need those to be soaked. Uh, also, we have garlic rosemary because I just happen to have a sprig of that growing in the window. And then for weirdo stuff, I have some sh dried shiitake mushrooms and these are gonna add a lot of umami. We're also gonna make a gravy to go with this and it's gonna be a mushroom gravy. So we're gonna need those shiitake mushrooms for that as well. And I've got some seaweed here, some dulse. That's going to help us build up the umami. You can add or subtract whatever you want from this. I'm not going to give you exact amounts. I'm going to make enough for 10 people, which would be a big casserole. Uh, so you could have it for your guests and then have some that you can put away. I'm making this for the bistro. And in the bistro, I'm going to put it in small round dishes and I'm going to have it for this weekend service. So I'm going to make 10 of them. If you're going to make 10, you want about enough for 10 people. So I have about 10 potatoes here. Once these are peeled and mashed, then, you know, everybody's going to eat about a potato and they're going to eat, you know, one tenth of all this stuff. So that's going to be our portions. We're just going to go from that. There's a bunch of things to do here. So we'll get started. We need to cook our lentils and soak our chickpeas. We need to put hot water on our shiitake mushrooms and get everything going mash our potatoes and dice and clean up these vegetables. So we'll just go through it one step at a time. And at the end of the video, we're going to make the gravy and we're going to plate one up and I'm going to show you how we would serve it in the bistro. It started on these potatoes. I want to get them on the stove to boil. I like to use a paring knife when I do potatoes. It's faster. These are russet potatoes. They mash up pretty good. They're the ones that are used mostly for French fries, uh, as well as mashing, and they also are a baker potato, so they're pretty versatile. I'm just going to take them and peel them, and, and I'm going to cut them up in chunks so they'll boil faster. And yeah, do you remember when baked potato skins, potato skins were a huge deal? Like, am I dating myself? When was that? Late 80s, 90s? All restaurants had them. They would deep fry the potato skins and then add things like sour cream and chives and stuff to it. I don't really see that anymore. Maybe I just don't go to those kind of restaurants. It was huge. So we've peeled all our potatoes and now we're going to go and we're going to put these in a pot filled with water on high heat and boil these off so we can mash them. Next up we have our onions, three big yellow onions, which I'm just going to peel and chop. I want to chop them fairly fine. I want this to not be too overly chunky. So I'm going to do this sort of like medium dice here. This is going to be inside the pie, so I'm not overly worried about the aesthetics or how perfect each little dice of onion is. This is what I'm looking for, something about that size. Onions are chopped. Now it's the carrots. I'm just going to peel them and chop them up. I'm going to do these pretty fine because I don't want them too junky. 
I'm going to use this uh, peeler. This is a Jonas. This is the original. Apparently, these people maybe invented this style of peeler. I prefer this over the Y-shaped one. What do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I like these ones because they're super fast. And you can actually go both ways really easily, too. I'm going to cut the ends off. And I'm just going to take the carrot and slice a flat spot on the bottom and then go through and make slices. Then I'm going to lay my slices down. Get it going. You can do it. it starts off slow and then gets faster as you go. And then I'm just going to. Dice these up into nice little dices. You want there to be texture, fools you into thinking there's like meat in the pie. And one way to do that is to not cook the living out of everything. One way to do that is to just cook things al dente so that they have a, a little bit of a resistance to them. So in order to do that, we want to cut things kind of small. Cutting them small allows us to not cook the vegetables too much. Uh, they can still have a bit of resistance to them, uh, but it's not like raw chunks, which is unappealing. These are little, kind of like one centimeter by one centimeter pieces. See, we got our carrots, we got our onions. Next up, celery. We cut this uh, piece off the end. Then I'm just going to score the celery, slice it into some long, skinny pieces. There we go, and there's our celery. I'm going to chop up these red peppers in the same way. When you're making a dish like this, it's a good time to go through your fridge and just find whatever you've got left around. Like You could add kale to this, uh, peas, like frozen peas churn up you know sky's the limit whatever you got around your kitchen that you like to eat that's a vegetable put it in your vegan cottage pie so our vegetables are prepped up we've got onions carrots celery and red peppers we're going to move this over to the range and start to cook we're going to put our lentils in the pan it's about a cup and a half of lentils and then we're going to cover the lentils with some vegetable stock you could just cover this with water. I just happen to have vegetable stock around, so that's what I'm going to use. Everything's set up here on the range. We have our potatoes are pretty much done, and our lentils are simmering away in the background there. So I'm just going to add some canola oil to the pan. So it's mixed up in the oil. I'm going to add a bunch of salt. Something I like to do at this stage is I want to add a bit of water and that is going to give me a, a better sweat or a better caramelization if I'm going for caramel. This is a point where I'm also going to add some pepper. My onions are going translucent now. I'm going to add in my shiitakes next. So these shiitakes, they've been hydrated in some really hot water for the last, oh, they've probably been in there for about an hour. And then I've chopped them up. Next, I'm going to add in my garlic. I think they're starting to stick to the bottom. I'm going to add a little white wine at this time. If you don't have white wine, you could use water. Once my garlic starts to match my onions, I can't really notice it anymore because it's also turned translucent. I'm going to add my celery, my carrots, my peppers. Add some more salt at this point. You can see it's starting to turn brown on the bottom. I'm going to turn it down a bit. I'm going to add a little more liquid. I'm going to add in some seaweed now. My ground cloves, allspice, cinnamon. Add a little bit more water around the edge. I'm going to throw this rosemary in. Just let it hang out in there. I'm going to have to remember to find that stem later. Now we're going to add tomato paste. And now I'm going to add vegetable stock to it. You know, I'm going to make sure to get all the brown bits off the sides of the pan, like this. My lentils are al dente. They're not totally cooked yet. But I'm going to strain them. 
out of the lentil water. Give them a little shake. And now I'm going to add them in. And then I'm just going to stir this. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more liquid. So these vegetables are still fairly crunchy, but they are starting to soften up. I just have one more thing to add to this, and that's the chickpeas. We're going to take our chickpeas and our water, and we're going to just a little bit of water so that these move around in the blender. And we're just going to quickly blitz these. These are our chickpeas that are not cooked. They're soaked. They started off dry, and I soaked them for about five hours. You could soak them overnight. We don't want to cook them. We want them to have a tooth to them. We want them to be al dente. Or these will be even harder than al dente. And all we want is a coarse mixture. And when we put this uncooked chickpea pieces into our pie filling, they're going to have the texture of ground beef. If you don't have the chickpeas, you don't have to add them. Adding canned chickpeas won't do anything, so I would not bother if you don't have dry chickpeas. But this is an easy way to mimic the texture of ground beef. So now we'll just add our chickpeas that we blitzed in here. And we're just going to mix those in. Finally, I'm going to add this corn in. Uh, it's frozen. It's going to cool this mixture down. Everything is cooked. Uh, we're going to assemble the pies, and then we're going to make the gravy, and then we're going to try one out. Next up is the mashed potatoes. Easy enough. Uh, we got our cooked potatoes. We want to add some salt in here and some fat. Instead of using cream or butter, or sour cream, or any of those things, we're going to use olive oil because we want this to be vegan. And then I'm just going to mash it up. So let's assemble one of these. I have my mix, my meat mix, my fake meat, my faux meat, and I have my mashed potatoes. I have a ring mold, and I have a fork. So I'm just going to take my little casserole dish that I'm going to use, but you could also assemble this into a large dish. My mix here is not super sloppy. It is still moist and wet, but it's not really dry. If yours was dry, you might want to add a little more liquid to it at this point. You could just add a bit of water in or something, but you don't want it to be too dry. I just added a layer of the, the mix, and then I'm gonna put my ring mold. If you don't have a ring mold, you can improvise and use, say, something about this big, like the bottom of a Tabasco sauce or a ramekin or something. But I'm just going to use that because I want to create a little well in the middle of my pie, because that's where we're gonna put our gravy. Now that we have our potatoes on top of our pie, we take our fork, we're just gonna make some striations around. And the reason we do this is because when we put it in the oven, we're gonna cover this with olive oil, and these ridges are gonna turn crispy and dark and crunchy, and that's what we want. Now I'm just gonna clean up the edge, and there, that's what we wanna do. We're gonna take our ring mold out, and this is, Basically, what the pie looks like. I'm going to do the gravy now. I'm going to heat my pot up and add a little bit of canola oil to it. My onions that I'm going to add. Some more salt. Now I have some more of these rehydrated shiitake mushrooms. Then I have some tomato paste. I'm going to cook that tomato paste until it starts to stick to the bottom of the pot. I'm going to add a little bit of my seaweed mixture both for umami and also because of the red color that imparts and you can see that sticking to the bottom here i have some white wine that i'm going to use to deglaze the stuff that was stuck to the bottom of the pan it has released and now we have our base here and we have to add <clears throat> some sort of liquid to it what i've done is i've reserved the lentil cooking water we cook the lentils in vegetable stock and I've also got the water that I soaked the mushrooms in. I've mixed those together in here. And this has quite a bit of flavor to it. I have about two, two tablespoons of cornstarch. 
in some cold water. I'm going to add this in and stir. And we need to bring it up to a boil for it to get to its thickest point. So we'll put this aside and work on the rest of our cottage pies. Drizzle olive oil over the mashed potatoes liberally. Then I'm going to take some Cajun spice. You could just use salt and pepper or something else. You don't have to put anything on here if you don't want to, but I'm going to put some Cajun spice. And then I'm going to take our gravy, which looks fantastic. I'm going to fill the well in the middle with gravy. I'm going to fill it till it's just about even. You could fill it so it's falling all over the place, but this will probably burble away a bit in the oven and sort of come out anyway. And also that gravy is going to work its way down into the pie. So this is what we have. And I'm going to put this in the oven and we're going to see what it looks like when it comes out. Well, here we are out of the oven and onto the plate. It's our little vegan gluten-free cottage pie uh, made with all organic and local vegetables. It's a nice little dish. We've just plated it up here and put some pickled onions and some gherkin pickles. We could also maybe put some other condiments with it. Maybe try this one out.